Welcome to Bald Guy DIY. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to use OpenSCAD to model knobs or dials for replacement parts or your electronics projects. I'm having so much fun using OpenSCAD to model 3D printed parts. And the main reason for that is that it's just so powerful. And in just a few lines of code, you can create so many different things. I started thinking about knobs and dials, things I like to use in my electronics projects because a lot of them have a post like an encoder or potentiometer that require some kind of knob or dial on it. In this video, I'm gonna show you a couple of different methods how you can use OpenSCAD to create knobs or dials and customize them for replacement parts of something that's broken or to use in new projects with electronics. Without further ado, let's get started. All right, as we get started here, of course, OpenSCAD needs to be installed on your computer. I have a video about that right here. And what I'm showing here is the basic design of what it would look like with just two protrusions or knobs on it, a basic design that we can customize to make a knob with a bunch of different parameters. First parameter is just the base diameter or how big we want that initial cylinder to be, the height of the base, the number of knobs or protrusions that we're gonna use, how big each of those protrusions will be, their height, and then how far away they are gonna be from the center. I use a relationship here of the base diameter, but you could choose to do that with an absolute value as well. And then to be able to add a hole later to the knob so it could be put onto a post or a screw, there are some parameters here, whether or not the hole is going to exist, the depth that it will be, the diameter of it, and then finally, if there needs to be a flat on the hole. Now, if you have some things like an encoder or potentiometer, they usually have a flat spot to keep the knob there without needing to put in a set screw. The core of the knob creation is this module that I've called knob, which is going to form the base structure, and then we're going to add the hole to it later. It starts with just a cylinder, which is simply the base diameter and the height, and then we're going to use this for loop, which is really the meat and potatoes and what makes the protrusions appear all around the outside of that center. If we took a look at it, you can see here that it's going to take the number of protrusions and it's going to, for every one of those, it's gonna rotate a certain number of degrees. It takes the 360 degrees of a circle, divides it by the number of protrusions, and rotates that much. So if you've got three, it's gonna rotate 120 degrees and then it's gonna move away from the center where we want it to be and then it's going to create a knob that's the height and radius that we set it to and then of course create that cylinder and that's what's going to be one of those nubs. It'll keep cycling through that until all of the nubs that have been specified have been created. So any number from two to 2000 and it'll create that many nubs around. In order to call that function, we're simply gonna just put the name of it, knob, and preview it, in which case you can see what we have here on the right-hand side. Now, if we change it to three, you can see how that immediately looks like a very different style knob, four, five, six, et cetera. You get a very different look, and it starts to look like the kind of commercial products you would see, anything from three, maybe on a simple faucet for your garden outdoor tap, or different numbers, you know, things that you would see plastic knobs that would be on all sorts of equipment. I know the recumbent bike that I use to work out has that kind of knob on it. So you just find the look and the size that you would like and you're ready to go. You can tweak all of the parameters as always and you'll get different sizes, different relationships and get the balance of what you're looking for. The next thing we need to do is declare the hole that's gonna go in there. If, assuming that this is gonna go onto a post or onto a screw or bolt, you need to put a hole in it as well. You could leave it without a hole and just drill and tap or, or embed something on it, glue it on, but in most cases, you're gonna need a hole. So I created another function here called hole, and you can see here, it's fairly straightforward as well. First of all, we're gonna specify if there needs to be a flat spot on the post, and if there is a flat spot required, it's going to change up the way that it creates the hole as you can see there. It starts with a base cylinder which is the hole diameter and then it's going to add a cube onto that in order to be able to subtract it from the cylinder. You can see here if we just call the hole by itself without subtracting it from everything we can see the cylinder and we can also see how it's created and the size that it makes and what happens if we were to change the size of the flat from zero it just makes the cylinder and if you add one it takes one unit off two units etc as much as you need in order to create that shape. Now if you were to measure with a pair of calipers, the outer diameter of the post, and also the diameter of the flat to the edge of the circle, you're going to be able to find those relationships, tweak the parameters above, and make a perfect size fit on your 3D printed parts. If we don't need the flat, it's simply going to create a cylinder with the depth and the diameter that we specified in our parameters above. 
If I remove the comment tags, you can see here, I've also created a, if a hole equals true. In other words, if we need a hole, it's going to create the knob, create the hole, and then subtract the hole from the knob. And if the hole is false, meaning we don't need one, it's just going to create the knob. That's all we need in order to create the finished model and be able to export it out and print it on a 3D printer. You can see here, it takes a couple seconds to render, and there is our hole with the flat that I specified, ready to go and be exported. If you want a smoother look, if this looks a little bit choppy, you just need to go and add a special function, dollar sign $fn, and make that equal to a larger number. The default, I think, is six. So if you add it to 100, which is what the OpenSCAD documentation shows, you can see it creates a much smoother surface, but you can put a higher number if you'd like. It's just gonna take a little longer to render. That's our finished knob. Customize it how you'd like, and you can get a lot of different variety and a lot of different uses from it. I created a very different looking dial, which is similar kind of principles. It's round, but much more of a smooth dial like you would see on some kind of electronics or maybe even on something like a stove burner or something like that. And the way that we create this is totally different than what we just did. So I'm gonna strip that down to its basic elements and show you the code that it takes to make any shape that you would like and turn it into a dial. If you look up the rotate extrude command in the documentation for OpenSCAD, you get an example that that includes these three lines of code. Basically, you can have a rotate, which we're gonna use in order to see uh, a simulation of what something would look like, the rotate extrude with the actual work, and then the polygon or the shape that you're gonna define in order to get that original shape. We start with a flat shape and then we use this rotate extrude command in order to rotate all the way around in a circle that flat shape. It creates a three dimensional shape. In other design software, I've seen it called a revolved base. That's what we're basically gonna create here. Now the shape can be almost anything and it's created from the sets of coordinates that you use in the polygon points. So all you need to do is create as many or as few points as you'd like that create that flat two dimensional object and then cause that object Object to be rotated and revolved 360 degrees and you'll get your finished projection. Now you can see here if I change it down to just three points I would start from the origin have another point let's say 50 units out and a third point 15 units up and there we have a triangle. Now if you use this first rotate command it'll sit upright and you can get an idea of what that's going to look like before you revolve it around and if we comment that out and put in our rotate extrude you can see what happens to create the full 3D model. It's pretty incredible when you first start looking at it, you wonder how is that ever going to become a three-dimensional object. But once you play around with those shapes a little bit, you start to see, oh, I see what's happening there. It's setting it upright, spinning it in a circle, and creating our shape from that. If you're to change the special function inside there to a number that's lower, you're going to get a choppier or more faceted look to it because it's basically going to create a projection for each number that you put in here. If we change it to something as little as 10, it's only going to take 10 steps around in the circle, and so you get all of these flat faces. It might be cool if you're looking for a chunkier or gem-like look to a, a dial, but in most cases you're going to crank that number up. The default one they use in the documentation is 200, so you're going to get a much smoother look. If you went 360, you'd have a much smoother look even more, but it does take longer to render. If we comment that back out, you see our object falls flat again, and now we're back to the two-dimensional object that we need in order to create that projection in the first place. At this point, you can really just play around with the coordinates, try a bunch of different options, and see what works. You know, by changing just a few things or adding a set of coordinates, you can see that it starts to make a different shape. Play with it till you get what you want. You might even want to go pen to paper and draw it out first, and then come in here and convert it to your design. But whatever you choose to do, you're just going to alter these coordinate points until you get the basic shape that you want and then make it more complicated from there. After playing around with the coordinates a little bit and then uncommenting out our rotate extrude, you can see we create it there. And if I want a flat top, I just need to change the coordinates so it creates a nice flat top. If we look at the finished dial that I created, it might look a lot more complicated, but if we strip away the final things so you can see what I did, you'll actually see here that it's not as complicated as it looks. Basically, I created my shape, and then all I did was add a circle onto the end to give it that round look, and then I subtracted a, a square from the end of it in order to give it a nice finished look and only use part of the circle. 
built into OpenSCAD, there's squares, circles, and triangles. So there's lots of things that you can do to come up with a two-dimensional design that's gonna work perfectly for this revolve command. You can see I subtract the square from it. What remains is just a little bit of that circle. And now when you revolve it with the rotate command, you get that nice smooth look with a nice round edge. Final thing I did there to create that notch on the top to give it a little bit of a position is just to create a cube and then subtract that cube from the total model. And that gives you that look like there's a little notch cut into it. You can play with the parameters there and create notches all the way around if you like, or just one central one that marks position. That's all it takes with this method to create a nice dial from any shape you can imagine. So there you have a couple of different methods that you can use with OpenSCAD in order to create some kind of revolved base or move around a circle and create a symmetrical looking knob or dial that you can put on an existing post or create for a specific application. Let me know in the comments what you would use OpenSCAD for and suggestions for videos that I might make in the future. If you like this kind of content, please be sure to give it a thumbs up Subscribe to the channel and check back weekly as I post a new video every Saturday morning. And if you have a comment, suggestion, or question, send me an email. My information is in the description below. I'd be happy to share the code that I use to create these projects or to answer any questions that you have about things that I've been working on. Thank you to all my existing subscribers as I pass 1,500 and looking forward to the, what the rest of the year has in store. Until next time, in all your DIY projects, whether you're dialed in or doing something else, don't be afraid to be balder.